Okay, welcome Black Carnivores. Welcome back to the Black Carnivore live stream. And tonight we are talking about sleep. And uh, I don't know if you saw the, um, you know, the thumbnail that I created for this, but you uh, will see there's a picture of me with mouth tape, which we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I thought that, uh, you know, we would talk about some of the biohacks that people use for, um, you know, for getting a good night's sleep and, uh, you know, and talk specifically about the ones that I've tried. So, uh, yeah, so let's just dive right into it. Um, So... I mean, generally, as far as sleep goes, you know, I've never really had a problem with sleep. You know, if anything, I need to make sure I get into bed earlier because, uh, you know, always, (laughs) I can always get more sleep, you know, that's like not a problem. Um, But, uh, you know, making sure that I get good quality sleep is, you know, I mean, that's kind of a big deal. And I know that I've discussed on this channel before, um, you know, my concerns about like making sure that I'm getting enough deep sleep because you know that there are multiple cycles to, um, you know, to sleep and um, deep sleep is kind of where, um, you know, some of the uh, physical healing and repair goes on. And, um, and that actually seems to happen at like a specific period of the night. So like, if you don't go to bed early enough, you're just going to miss it, you know, and then you just have the other, you know, um, stages of sleep. So, uh, so, you know, those are, that's some of the things that I've been concerned about, but, you know, I've had people talk to me about um, breathing and making sure that you're breathing through your nose and breathing properly. Uh, and that, that makes a really big difference in, uh, I mean, you know, not only sleep, but just like, you know, your general anxiety level, your mood and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, and I, I mean, I always thought that was interesting, but like, you know, it's like, okay, you you know, should I meditate more? Uh, you know, what do I do? And it always seemed to be something that you sort of do outside of life, you know, like meditating is something that you, you stop and you do it and then you go back to doing whatever you're doing. But, um, you know, this, this is a little bit different. So I was, uh, so I got this book called conscious breathing and, um, you know, it, uh, it's actually, you know, it's pretty interesting. It kind of is a review of the literature out there on breathing and um, the way that we're supposed to breathe, and uh, you know what the what the studies say about how our breathing impacts, you know, our whole lives and our physical health and and many different things. So, um, you know, so I've been reading that and kind of you know taking some of that in. I I realized that like you know, the whole nose sinus thing, it's not there to just sort of torment you, (laughs) which is what it felt like for me. You know, I was like, why do you have holes in your, in your head? Why do you have sinus cavities? They only get um, full and, you know, cause these massive headaches and discomfort. So, um, you know, I, to me, it just seemed like pointless, but, uh, you know, but, you know, reading this book, it's like, oh, like, there's a whole lot of stuff that like is happening in the nose. So when you breathe in through your nose, you know, the, um, the cilia and the hairs in there are supposed to be uh, filtering out particulate matter. And, um, and then, you know, it's adding moisture into the air. And then there's like these turbines that, um, you know, kind of circle the air and, and force it, um, to go down deep into your lungs and at the bottom of the lungs, there's stuff happening there that makes sure that you're getting, you know, a whole lot of stuff. Okay. So you're getting the best quality air and you're breathing properly and blah, blah, blah. So when all of that breaks down and you're breathing through your mouth, you know, you've got a lot, a lot of problems, you know, that all of that stuff's not, not happening. And, um, you know, and so you're, you're not breathing as well as you possibly could. So, you know, I thought that was, uh, you know, I mean, that's important. And then I, uh, and, you know, as for me, as a person who like had asthma and tons of allergies and all constant sinus infections and all that kind of stuff, you know, I, this whole area was just like, to me, non-functional. And um, I had nasal polyps and, you know, I, I had an MRI for something else. And the doctor was like, gee, you know, how do you breathe? Like, I don't understand this. 
So it was all a mess. And so it's so weird for me now, like carnivore, you know, eating a carnivore diet just like turned all of that around. I've spoken to you all about, you know, my asthma, how that, you know, the asthma went away, um, you know, how my allergies just stopped. You know, once I took out the dairy and the, uh, you know, and the vegetables, like all that stuff just stopped. And so um, now for the first time, ever, you know, I feel like I'm able to sleep on my back and I can breathe. And that never used to happen. I would always feel like I couldn't breathe. I mean, I, I mean, I think I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I was having, you know, like sleep apnea essentially. And, um, you know, so that was a big deal. And then, and I couldn't, um, you know, I, I never had, you know, more than one functional nostril. So, you know, if I slept on one side, I could sleep out of, you know, one nostril, or I could breathe out of one nostril. So, uh, you know, so once I went carnivore, it's like all of this stuff changed in my, you know, my face and my nose, but, um, I had been habituated to decades of breathing through my mouth. And so, you know, my breathing habits didn't change to correspond with my new abilities. And, um, so there, so that, uh, sort of gives the backstory as to why talking about mouth taping. So, uh, you know, as I was explaining, this book is talking about the importance of breathing through your nose and what that does in terms of, you know, um, making the air quality and, uh, that you're breathing better and also making sure it's like the right amount of oxygen versus carbon dioxide and so on. So, um, so the idea is that while you're sleeping, you tape your mouth shut to make sure that your mouth stays closed and you're really breathing through your nose. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and that is supposed to help with all sorts of things. And, you know, we're asleep for a big chunk of the day. So, you know, if you do that, I mean, that's a big chunk of the day that you're getting better quality air, that your brain is um, getting, you know, the oxygen that it needs, that your body is getting the oxygen that it needs, and so on. So, um, yeah, so I've been doing this, I guess, about a week now. And um, I, so I was a little bit nervous about putting it on. And I know, you know, m many people are, I mean, like the idea of, um, the idea of uh, taping your mouth clothes like can feel a little bit claustrophobic or like you might not be able to breathe. And, um, you know, and so I, I was a little bit nervous about that, but the first night I put it on and, um, and I thought, well, I'll just put it on for a little while. I'm sure I'll wake up and then I'll just take it off, you know, during the night and, uh, and I'll be fine. And I put it on and I woke up eight hours later. <laughs> I mean, I didn't wake up at all. And what was really surprising, well, for me, and I, you know, who knows how this might impact you or if you choose to try it. But, um, you know, what happened for me is that uh, I normally kind of wake up through the night, not enough to like be fully, you know, up and awake, but, you know, just sort of wake up, roll over, go back to sleep and so on. And it's like none of that happened. It was like I closed my eyes and then I opened them again and the sun is shining. You know, like that eight hours just didn't happen. And that was a really kind of wild experience for me. Um, you know, I definitely felt rested. I feel like if I, uh, you know, perhaps I should download some sort of app to kind of look at my sleep quality or see, you know, see um, if I see anything notable um, or I don't know, I guess I have to dig out my old Fitbit and compare um, you know, data that I've had, uh, about my sleep, but, uh, yeah, I, um, I, I really am glad that I did it. I'm going to keep doing it for a while. I do. Think it really has made a difference and I would highly recommend, you know, that you guys try it and, um, you know, and take a look at that uh, book as well. Um, so, uh, I, I didn't think that there would be, there could be any improvement upon my sleep, but, um, I was wrong. It, it definitely, there's definitely been an improvement. So I recommend it. Um, okay. So, uh, Hey, Heather, glad to see you. Welcome. 
Um, so anyway, uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. What are the things, the top things that you do to help your sleep? And how do you think that following the carnivore diet has impacted your sleep? Um, I, for me, for sure, like, um, I, you know, as I said, my sleep has never really been terrible, but, um, I, you know, the physical things, um, you know, that were hampering my body, that's what's improved. And so I've been able to get much better, uh, you know, better, more restful sleep because I can breathe (laughs) because, um, you know, not having any kind of inflammation or stuffiness or anything like that. And that is just such a pleasure for me. Um, you know, I just, the, the, you know, the suffering from the inflammation and the allergies really, you know, that sucked. It really, really sucked. Hey, Sharika, welcome. It's good to see you. Um, you know, definitely, uh, put, if you have any questions, oh, shut up, Siri. If you have any questions, definitely, um, put them in the, uh, chat. So I see Sharika, you say you need help with sleep. Uh, you know, tell me what some of the things are going on. Um, you know, what now, uh, of course, if you read the magazines or the books, they talk about, you know, improving your sleep hygiene. And that's the first thing to look at, uh, if you're having trouble sleeping. So making sure that you're in a cool, dark room, um, that you've actually, that there's no light and it's, you know, and one of the things you might think that the light is just about like, you don't want your, you don't want your eyes to see the light. But um, it's actually not just your eyes, but your whole body. And the light actually messes with your um, circadian rhythms. And so um, you you really have to have no light at all in the room. So um, I find that light does bother me. And so I like have a black sock that I put over my alarm clock. And I have, you know, like things, dark things or heavy things that I put over like the... Um, the power strips so that that little light doesn't show and, um, and things like that. So you might, and plus, of course, I have uh, blackout curtains. Uh, so you might want to need to, um, you know, you might want to check on that and make sure that they're really, you're really in a dark room. And, um, and of course, staying cool, you know, if it's hot, it can be really hard to sleep. Uh, you want to, you know, make sure that you've got silence or as much silence as you possibly can. Um, certainly keeping the TV and all that stuff out of the room is important. And then um, there are people that are really careful about the blue lights. So I'm not careful about that at all at night. So, you know, I'm reading my um, phone or on the computer, you know, right up until I go, go to bed and I don't have blue blocker glasses. But, um, but you know, that, but some people really are careful about that. So you might try to see if that's an issue or I know, um, like the Apple phones allow you to put, um, uh, then for the night mode, it allows you to like turn the, the screen completely orange. And, um, that's also a way that you can handle it without the blue, blue blocker glasses. Um, okay. So Heather G says, as you were talking I just realized that my breathing is better. I'm doing less mouth breathing these days. That's awesome. So that is precisely what you want. (laughs) You want to be breathing through your nose. And, uh, you know, that's really amazing. Um, what, what's improved or why are you able to breathe through your nose now, um, versus before? Um, Erica says, watch ASMR videos. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) A lot of people like those. And Erica says, I have sinus issues too. My sprays help. Been sleeping, uh, been sleeping all right for now. Um, yeah, the sinus issues really uh, improved a lot for me when I finally, well, even when I went keto, the sinus issues improved a lot. So whereas I used to get sinus infections all the time, all the time, um, I didn't have them as much when I went keto. Um, but, but again, once I took out the dairy and took out the vegetables, that's when it all completely stopped and my sinuses like completely opened up. So, um, you know, so I don't know, you may, it may take time to get to that point, but you know, that's something to consider. Um, I used to use like a neti pot all of the time and, uh, you know, when I was keto as well and, um, 
you know, I guess it was helpful. I don't know. They say rinsing your sinuses was helpful. Um, it was, you know, certainly uncomfortable and cumbersome to have to do, but, um, yeah. So I hope Erica that, you know, you continue to see improvement and, um, and that it's good. Uh, yeah. And so as far as, uh, so with sleep, the other thing they say, I, you know, I'm actually surprised at how many people find their sleep is disrupted if they eat, uh, too close to bedtime and, uh, too close to bedtime can be, um, you know, many hours, you know, I have some people, some clients who say like they need four hours, four or five hours before bedtime. So you might think about that too, whether food is, is bothering you. And they do say, you know, I mean, your digestion is, um, you know, it's, it's a big process. It takes a lot of energy and your body is like very engaged when you're, when you're doing that. So if you're digesting while you're sleeping, it means a lot of the other stuff that's supposed to happen while you're sleeping is not happening. So it makes sense that, you know, it could be a problem. Um, but some people, you know, whether it's having like heartburn or some kind of indigestion, um, or just generally not being able to sleep, um, it's you, you want to be careful about eating before bed. Uh, okay. Heather G says, I think because I have limited dairy, I didn't realize until carnivore that I had a sensitivity. Uh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so many people think that they don't have a problem with dairy and I didn't think so either. You know, well, I, I used to like get an upset stomach and everything when I would eat, uh, you know, I mean, if I would eat, um, anything more than a minute amount of cheese, I would have an upset stomach. And, and then when I went keto, that all stopped. And so I just assumed, oh, I don't have a problem, but, um, you know, I, I think that I had some gut healing, so I didn't have digestive problems, but it didn't mean that the sensitivity wasn't there. And, um, you know, and there were other places where it was still manifesting. So, you know, specifically in my sinuses, so I, you know, I, I did a lot better once I took it out. So I, you know, I really do think it's worth it for everybody to do an experiment and, you know, try to go without cheese for, or any kind of dairy for two weeks and see what happens. You know, it really doesn't take very long to actually do the experiment and you just, you know, then you can just know, you know, you don't have to ponder, you don't have to wonder, you don't have to, you know, consider what other people say, you just do it, look at the evidence, and then you'll know. And then, um, then if you choose to add it back in, you'll know, you know, you'll know what you're dealing with. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's a thought there. Uh, another, other reasons why people have difficulty with sleeping is, um, you know, coffee. So there's different people who are uh, impacted differently by coffee, and some people seem to be able to drink it, and it's like water, and it has no effect on their awakeness. Um, and then other people, it's like, you know, keeps them like up all night, and they're all spazzed out. So uh, that's something to think about, like how much coffee are, are you having? How late in the evening are you having, or in the afternoon are you having it? Um, and, uh, you know, and, and just kind of pay attention to its effects on you. And coffee, you know, is known to increase uh, anxiety. Um, that's another effect. So if you're struggling with anxiety or depression, uh, you know, you might really want to think about your coffee as well. So, uh, yeah. And let's see, Meat Based Musing says, I have a weighted blanket that helps me sleep when I use it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's really popular, too. And um, I got a weighted blanket and I tried sleeping with it. And I just, <clears throat> I don't know, the whole thing was kind of weird. I felt kind of weighed down by it. And I don't know, I didn't like it. So I... I tried it a couple of times and I just kind of had to let it go. And, uh, but, um, you know, I'd love to hear if any of you have tried it and, uh, you know, what you guys think, um, me based musings, how long have you been using it and has it really improved your sleep? Um, you know, uh, does anybody else in your household use it? Um, and, uh, yeah. And, um, and where did you get it? Let's see. <clears throat> Erica says, tried that with dairy and coffee for a few months and you're right, it works. 
Um, wait, Erica, what did you try with the dairy and coffee for a few months? Um, okay. Hey, Leonard, it's great to see you. Welcome. I'm so glad you are here. So we are talking about sleep. Uh, so I've just gone through a, um, you know, pretty, pretty long list of things that, uh, you know, might be, um, bothering you. Uh, another thing, actually, that I guess is sort of unique to keto, or you know, people who are running, um, who are running on fat for energy rather than sugar, is um, in the beginning, some people are creating a lot of ketones, and so, uh, which is great, but it can keep you awake because ketones is it's energy, and you know how in the beginning you're once you finally get into ketosis and you're running well. <clears throat> it's kind of like, wow, you know, you have all of this energy, you feel great, you know, you're ready to get out there and, and, uh, you know, kick butt and take names and all of that kind of stuff. But then, you know, it's like 1230 at night and <laughs> you really need to be sleeping. So, uh, some people do struggle in the beginning just with the high amount of ketones and, um, you can kind of, um, you know, struggle through and, uh, and wait till your body sort of normalizes or what you can do. Uh, some people will have a little bit of carbs and that, you know, having that carbs will just kind of bring down the amount of ketones that you have in your body. And that will, that'll, that can help you fall asleep. So, um, if you were struggling for that reason, having, um, you know, this would be a good, use of like a small bowl of, um, blueberries or, you know, of some kind of fruit that, uh, you know, gives you just, um, not enough sugar to knock you out of ketosis, but just to bring it down a little bit. And so, um, you know, and help you fall asleep. Uh, okay. So Erica says, oh, you cut out by cutting out dairy and coffee for a few months and you're, and I was right. Okay. Awesome. I'm so glad that you did that. Yeah, you know, and I keep doing this dance with the coffee and um, I was out of it for two weeks and then my friend was visiting for, uh, you know, for Christmas and he is an avid coffee drinker and I just, you know, I just was like, I've got to have some. So I was drinking it for the last couple of days and like yesterday I felt so late in the afternoon. I felt so hyped up. It was just like, Oh my God, I've had way too much caffeine. So, um, yeah, I can definitely feel it all. I can feel it a lot. Uh, okay. So Heather says, um, I have a weighted blanket as well. I did sleep well at first, but I noticed that I take it off in the middle of the night. Mm hmm. Uh, Yeah. I guess that's, that's not, you know, that can happen. Um, let's see. And meat based musing says, I don't use the weighted blanket regularly. It takes getting used to. I bought mine on a whim at Walmart and it's 25 pounds. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe I should pull mine out and give it a try again. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but there you go. And uh, Meat Based Musing says, I was drinking decaf and started craving regular coffee and had to cut it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've definitely, I've had decaf before and it's like, I taste it. And, you know, I don't really love the taste of coffee. I like the way it smells and I like the idea of it and I like how it makes me feel, but I don't love the way it actually tastes. So when I have the decaf coffee and I don't get the way it makes me feel, I just get the way it tastes. It's just kind of like, yikes, this is not great. So, um, yeah, so I haven't, uh, so I haven't really done much of the decaf, but you know, I'm getting myself off again and this is it. I'm off, off, off. Hey, Yvette, welcome. I'm so glad you are here. Um, we are talking about sleep and feel free to jump in and, and talk about sleep. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of one of my, I, I decided for this year in 2022, um, you know, I do like to do resolutions. So, uh, you know, I wanted to make 2022 a year that I, you know, I kind of, uh, play around and optimize my health, play around with some of these biohacking um, ideas that uh, you see, you know, people getting into. Um, I, you know, maybe next what I would like to do, I hear people talking about, you know, making sure that you 
Um, you know, your eyes have a morning um, sun, you know, the sunlight from sunrise and from sunset actually, you know, fall on your face and, and have your eyes see it. And um, that's supposed to really help with um, regulating your um, internal clock and, you know, other stuff. So I've been kind of feeling like, you know, trying some of these things might be, um, you know, really helpful and reporting back on it, of course, to you guys and uh, letting you know what's what's worth pursuing and what's not. So uh, I already wake up at 6 a.m. So I just got to get myself outside for when the sun rises and uh, and uh, yeah, let, let you know, go from there. But um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's one of the things I've been thinking about. And, um, and then, yeah, I'm, I want to, you know, try to make sure that I'm making more content and, and, uh, you know, I've, I've, you probably have all seen that I've been posting these videos of answering questions that people have posed to me. And so I'm going to, you know, try to keep doing that. I'm, once we get past the holiday season, there won't be one every day, but I will, you know, do them a couple of times a week. And I think that'll be really helpful because there's a lot of new people. I mean, I'm so excited and happy to see how many, you know, black people are trying the carnivore diet and getting into this way of life. It is really exciting. So, you know, now when I see, you know, people, new people following me and I talk to them, um, you know, it's not like people who are like, wow, I've never heard of this before, which is what it used to be like. And now it's like, oh yeah, I did this a year ago, but I didn't, I don't know, I didn't do it right. Or I didn't feel good or I messed up or, you know, I want to do it, try it again. Um, but yeah, it's like, there are people who have heard of the carnivore diet and have tried it. And so, you know, and they're coming back. So coming back for more. So I'm excited about that. Um, and okay, Heather says, I, uh, I love the, the YouTube shorts you've been doing. That's great. I'm really glad. Um, that's uh, awesome. And Island Girl says, sunrise is best for me. Walking and seeing the sunrise starts my day. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think so. Um, it's, you know, it's nice when you can um, sort of commune with nature, for sure. I definitely feel energized by, you know, any time that I can spend in nature. Uh, so that is helpful. Uh, Lorraine says, I really liked your video on eating fat. Thanks. Yeah. People really seem to like that video. So I hope that, um, more of you, uh, are able to, you know, find beef fat trimmings and, and get out there and try them. Um, and let me know, you know, how many of you guys who are watching, how, you know, how many of you actually, um, you know, make beef fat trimmings <laughs> and what do you think of them and how do you make them? Um, you know, I honestly think they are the bee's knees. So delicious. Um, so, uh, I, <laughs> I make them as often as I can. Uh, and it definitely does benefit for me. Uh, let's see. Douglas Somerville says carnivore diet. It's lifestyle change for me. Uh, yeah, it definitely is a huge lifestyle change. It is, um, it, you know, and what I really love about the lifestyle change is that it's easy. It's simpler and easier than anything you've ever done before. Um, you know, once you kind of wrap your mind around it, you know, you, um, you make one dish, one meal, one meat, and, you know, you might eat off of it for a couple of meals or a couple of days, um, it's not like you have to come up with constantly, you know, new kinds of recipes, new kinds of menus, different kinds of food. You know, it's not nearly as much work as so many of the, you know, the diet programs or the, the you know, healthy ways of living that I, you know, followed in the past. So uh, it is easy, it is tasty, and it is um, so nourishing and fulfilling. Um, I, I just, you know, can't, I'm excited about it. <laughs> I continue to be excited about it. Okay. Heather G says, my brother has started the carnivore diet recently. He seems to be enjoying it. Yes. I'm so glad to hear that. That is amazing. Uh, it, when you can get family on board, that is awesome. Um, 
And you say he's also uh, amazed at how he's losing tons of inches. Exactly. That is so common. And, um, you know, really, uh, that's really great. So I'm glad to hear it. And, uh, you know, so tell me what are your carnivore resolutions for the coming year? Um, and, you know, and it don't, and I, I just want to say, don't feel, uh, you know, bad if you feel like you need a little bit more support or encouragement to actually, you know, make this lifestyle uh, change happen for you. Um, you know, you have to recognize that some people are, um, you know, actually addicted to sugar. And, uh, and so it can be really hard to, to come off. You can have a harder time with cravings than other people. So that's just something to consider. And, um, you know, it's a lot to wrap your head around. You know, we are talking about eating in a very, very different way. So, uh, so sometimes that can be a challenge too. And then if you live in a household where people are not supportive, either they refuse to give up, you know, their, um, you know, their foods. And so you're like cooking multiple meals and multiple types of things. Um, or there's just a lot of, you know, junk food around that's very tempting for you. It can be hard. So, um, you know, so if you're feeling like you need more support to, uh, you know, to be able to successfully move forward, you should join my challenge. Um, you know, my challenge is starting. So it is um, officially starting January 10th but I'm opening it January 3rd. So you, if you join early, you'll get a whole month instead of just 21 days. And, um, but that first week is like a prep week. So if you, you know, if you fell off over the holidays or things were a mess, you got a week to get yourself together and then you start officially on the 10th. And, um, you know, so if in that group though, you'll have a lot of support and encouragement from people who are, um, you know, who, who all believe in this way of eating and who aren't gonna give you a hard time or tell you you're crazy, you know, uh, for a lot of us, even though this is, seems to be becoming more popular and more people have heard about it, there's still, um, you know, you don't often run into real life people who are eating this way. So it's really nice to get that community from, uh, you know, the people in the Facebook group. And then of course you get, you know, the meal plan, the, the recipes, um, workouts, and also a, um, an accountability call with me. So at one point, um, during the, you know, during the month, so we can kind of troubleshoot any problems you're having or, um, you know, kind of come up with, uh, target goals and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, so definitely think about joining the challenge. I will make sure that the link is in the description, but you can also go to my Instagram page and in the bio, there's a link there. Um, okay. So Angela G says, I have a weighted, uh, a weighted heating pad that I lay across my feet at night. It's wonderful. And I'm in, um, I'm out in no time. Um, Wow, I've never heard of a weighted heating pad. If I had had that growing up, that would have been amazing because I forget about my feet. I used to get, you know, horrible menstrual cramps and to have a weighted heating um, pad would have been amazing. That uh, it never even occurred to me that, that that was a thing. Okay, let's see. Uh, Lorraine says, um, starting uh, January 2020, 2022, we are doing beef, eggs, and bacon for the month. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, you know, I've kind of been thinking about doing um, a beef a beef only thing for a bit. I just um, am not desiring anything else. And um, yeah, so I just really want beef <laughs> and a lot of it. So uh, I bought the oxtails yesterday and made that with the neck bones. And that was amazing. And the sauce was so creamy and velvety and delicious. I'm, I think I'm going to buy some more oxtails because that was just too good. Too good. Uh, I don't see myself. I'm probably not going to have eggs for a while, but definitely or bacon. Um you know, once I discovered beef bacon, uh, I, you know, I mean, this might, these might be fighting words for, for many of you, but honestly, I feel like pork bacon just does not, um, doesn't hold the candle to beef bacon. So if it's not beef bacon, I think I don't want it. Weird, right? 
Um, okay, Erica says my resolution is to find more ver more various cuts of meat and organs and just have bigger portions so I'm full and not tempted. Uh, yeah, why are you not doing that right now? Um, well, so there are two parts there. One, you know, imp increasing the variety and uh, and also having organs, I think, is super important. You know, increase the variety. Don't let yourself get bored on carnivore. It's totally not necessary. Um, yeah, that was the video from yesterday with uh, that adorable picture of the cat, like, you know, laid out on the um the uh, armrest, but uh, don't let yourself get bored. Like there's no reason to get bored. It's delicious stuff, but also eat enough. You know, that's the amazing thing about the carnivore diet is it that, you know, you get satisfied and you stay satisfied. Um, and then you can eat as much as you need to, to, to get fully satisfied. And then, you know, and, and you don't have to worry about restricting and all of that kind of stuff. And in fact, um, when you're on carnivore, restricting can kind of work against you. Um, it can, uh, you know, slow down your metabolism and it can make you have more cravings and it can make you more likely to, uh, you know, to fall off of the program. So don't, don't restrict, eat enough, you know, go ahead and eat enough. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Hey, large picture. Welcome. It's good to see you. Um, awesome. Let's see. Uh, Douglas says, also for me, I'm by myself with my family. They look at me like I'm insane until I challenge their knowledge. Most of the time I can convince them to eat keto. Yeah, you know, they will look at you like you're insane. And eventually they will just say, oh, that's Doug. You know, just crazy dog. And they will leave it alone. And then they'll see how amazing you look and you feel and your energy and all of that. And then they'll start to say, well, I, what are you doing again, Doug? How, how do you do this? What do I eat? You know, I'm at the grocery store. What should I buy? So, you know, it just takes a little time. And then, um, you know, you'll be a you'll be the uh, the the beacon for the rest of your family and they will go to you for health advice. So no worries. You'll get there. <laughs> um, Audra, so glad you are here. Welcome. I'm glad you made it. Um, let's see. Last real one. Um, how many of your family members think you're crazy for your diet diet? Um, all of them, all of them. Is that clear? All of them. <laughs> Like I, I've told you guys before, my dad's a vegetarian. Um, there, well, there's, and I guess there's some near vegetarians in my um, family. And uh, on my father's side of the family, you know, n nobody's obese or, um, you know, nobody's really had much of a weight problem. So I, you know, they really haven't thought about diet uh, for most of their lives. So, uh, they just think what I'm doing is crazy. I mean, now, you know, there's people with high blood pressure and strokes and stuff like that, but, um, you know, I, I don't really see them sort of making the connection with diet and, um, some of these outcomes. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they think I'm crazy. And if, um, you know, yeah, but, I, what can I say? I mean, you know, you can't live for other people. You got to do what makes you feel great. And, uh, and that's it. So, <laughs> so yeah. And if I can't convince people, I don't know, you know, I mean, I've got a whole YouTube, Instagram. It's like, you know, there's a lot of people who find this very beneficial. You know, I talk to doctors who explain why, and they just, in one ear and out the other, but that's okay. Uh, okay. Heather says I had oxtails on Tuesday. They were delicious, but so expensive. Yeah. It's so expensive. And, but that's why I said like, um, I got two packages of oxtail, but then two packages of, uh, the beef neck bones and, um, you know, there's, there's meat on them and there's bones. So, um, it was, and those were, you know, a few dollars, um, per pound, uh, as opposed to the oxtails. So I did it to kind of stretch the meat and, um, you know, and, and to have more bones that I could use to make, uh, bone broth. So I think I'm going to make, 
Actually, so I'm going to collect all of the bones that I've thrown into the freezer for the past couple of months, and I'm going to make uh, bone broth tomorrow. So I, I guess I should try to record it, but, um, you know, it's so simple. I mean, really, I just roast the bones in the oven and then, you know, put them all in the Instant Pot and um, and put it on for, you know, four hours, I think it is, and then that's it. So, yeah, that's the goal. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Miss Tady, today is National Bacon Day. <laughs> well, um, I guess I am just ruining National Bacon Day. I mean, I don't know. Does that mean it's National Bacon Day, just like bacon of any kind, or is it like pork bacon? Um, sorry for all the pork bacon lovers out there. I didn't mean to ruin it, but um, happy uh, National Bacon Day. Um, have a good one. <laughs> Um, Heather, oh, Heather G says, uh, all but two family members think she's insane as well for eating this way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Leonard asks, what do I think about keto chow, chow electrolyte drops? Just got in a big bottle, been putting it in my water until it's really salty. I, <laughs> I have turbo diarrhea. Um, I'm so sorry, Leonard. That really sucks. Um, use less. You're putting way too much in. Um, that's usually a sign. Um, the the diarrhea is a sign that you're putting too much, um, you know, too much salt or too much electrolytes in. So with the keto chow electrolyte drops, I've used those before. Um, you know, I think that they're great. You know, they're a good option. Uh, I follow the instructions on the bottle. So on the bottle, um, it tells you like there's a little flask, like a mini flask that you can carry around in your purse. And it, and the top, the lid of that is a, also a measuring device. And so it tells you to take, uh, I think it to take half of that uh, cap full and um, use that in a 16 ounce cup. So it doesn't usually make the water taste salty. Like you can just sort of barely taste the mineral taste. So if it's tasting salty to you, that would suggest you're putting a lot in and that's too much. Um, so I hope that you feel better <laughs> once you stop using all that. I know that sucks. Um, I, I do feel bad. Uh, but yeah, just dial it back. That's all. You don't need to use that much. Uh, okay. Last real one says, um, laughing out loud, Heather work have to be held. Uh, okay. Uh, well, it sounds like you're saying, um, socializing is tar is hard on this way of eating too. Yeah, actually it is. And, um, I, you know, dating is kind of weird, you know, and people are like, I mean, even though I'd say I follow a carnivore diet, I only eat meat. People just don't seem to understand what that means. Like it, you know, there's still this level of surprise. Like when I, you know, order a steak and I don't want the side or I don't eat the side, you know, there's still this level of surprise, like, oh, you're only going to eat the steak. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think that you, uh, you know, people will, take you as you are. And if they don't, then they're not the right one for you. <laughs> I guess that's all there is to it. Um, okay. Lorraine says beef liver and heart are great. It took some time to love liver, but I do now. Amazing to me. Yeah. Um, livers are, you know, it's a tough one, but I, um, you know, and I think it's great liver and heart are both very nutritious. Uh, I, I, I also think that you don't, if you want to try organ meat, you don't have to heart, start with the hardest ones, you know, and liver, I, is the harder, you know, one of the hardest ones, you know, it's a, it is a powerful taste. So, um, you know, don't be, don't beat yourself up if you can't do liver. Um, but I do think it's important to try it every now and then and see how it tastes and, and what you think of it. Cause I, I did come around on it myself, um, where I, I really, I kind of like the taste. So it's just, you know, it's, it's very nutritious, but you don't need to eat it all the time. And once you have a taste for it, your body will crave it when it needs it. And then you have it and then you don't need it anymore and it won't crave it. So, 
Um, so that's awesome, Lorraine. I'm so glad that you, you know, that that happened for you. Um, Angela says, um, let's see, meat based musings, try it. I wanted to, to use that to see if I'd like it or not. Uh, now I want a full blanket. Uh, oh, a full weighted blanket. Yeah. Um, let's see. And uh, Lorraine says, my niece sent us ribeyes from a farm to her carnivore aunts. Love it. Oh, that's, see, now it's wonderful when your family understands, supports you, and figures out the right thing to send you. That is amazing. So congratulations. <laughs> Um, meat-based musings. I've always been the one on the weird diet in my family. Well, yes, you know, and many of us have been the one who's always, you know, trying to lose some weight, trying to do this, trying out this thing, you know, making sure to have, uh, I mean, I'm certain I was the first one to have like a raw kale salad, um, in my family and, you know, with the massage dressing and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, so I definitely was one of the, the people who was doing all of these things early. Um, but I'm glad that I finally found the right thing and I'm just going to stick with it. <laughs> I don't need wheatgrass juice anymore. Anything like that. Um, okay. Last uh, real one says, even with the results, they still go against it. The brainwashing is real. For sure. For sure. The brainwashing is seriously real. And, um, you know, and I don't know, like, there's just nothing you can do about it. You know, all you can do is um, live your best life and let people be interested in the results that you're seeing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, last real one asks, Heather, you never have a cheat day. Um yeah, I think that's a great question. I'd love to hear from all of you, you know, what you do. Um, I realize that, like, I just can't get right back on um, if I cheat. And so I just eventually decided I'm done with the cheats because it just, it leads, you know, it's so freeing. I mean, once I stopped eating, you know, sugar and, and like donuts and cake and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, I felt compelled and, and controlled by it when I ate it all the time. And once I finally stopped eating it, like I got my, my brain back and my life back and I didn't feel compelled to have it, but then I would have a cheat and it'd be like all of that all over again. And I finally decided like, I just didn't want that anymore. And that it, you know, there's no way for me to have a little and then, you know, get right back on plan. So I just said no more. So I, you know, I'd love to hear from you guys. Like, do you, you know, do you feel the same way? Are you ready to, you know, completely, um, stop, stop the cheat, stop, you know, stop nibbling on, you know, this and that, are you, you know, and ready to like jump all the way in <laughs> with this lifestyle? Um, okay. Paulette says I'm never without bone broth around, uh, bone broth around it does a body good. Uh, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And, um, and so I actually decided, um, I, so I've, I've ordered a couple of crazy things. Uh, I ordered some L-glutamine powder and I also got, um, beta hydroxybutyrate, um, salts, otherwise known as ketone salts. Um, so the L-glutamine is, um, it's part of what's in the bone broth that, um, you know, helps with the healing of the gut. And so, uh, you know, it can be really helpful. And that's why a lot of people try to drink a lot of bone broth in the beginning of keto or in the beginning of going keto, um, because it can really help with the, with the, you know, gut healing. And if you have leaky gut, um, you know, to help with that. And, um, you know, even though I've been carnivore a long time, like I, you know, I wonder whether there's any more healing that could happen in the gut and maybe it would be helpful for me to, um, you know, increase the L-glutamine. I mean, I, you know, I can make the bone broth, but I really don't like bone broth and I can see that it's going to be hard for me to make that like a daily, um, a daily thing that I include. So I will try to have more but, you know, the, the chances of me making that, uh, you know, really a daily thing, it's just, that's just not going to happen. 
Um, so that's, so that's why I got the powder. And then, um, and then I wanted to try the ketone salts because I think that that can actually be a really helpful tool for people in the beginning of, um, you know, who are going keto or going carnivore and in the, in the early stages before they've really gotten like fat adapted and all of that. And, um, you know, so I wanted to try it and kind of see how it was and then, you know, be able to report back to you guys. Uh, so that's why I got that. And it's got electrolytes and stuff in it. Um, so it, that can help as well, especially, you know, in the beginning for people who are, who don't have their electrolytes together. So I will let you know, um, it only came today and I wanted to try it, but, um, it came like late in the afternoon and, uh, you know, I don't like to try new things right before the live stream in case there's a stomach problem and I didn't want to do that. So I will try it in the morning and, um, report back to you guys. Let's see. Uh, um, Heather G says, I try, I go off plan sometimes, but I try not to do it often. Awesome. Um, Douglas says, I had to learn. You can't save everyone. Uh, you know, if they ask questions, then it's time to educate. Absolutely. 100%. I totally agree. Uh, <laughs> Johnny G. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, welcome. It's good to see you again. Heather says, um, chicken livers, the scrambled eggs. Yeah, that sounds like a good one. Um, and Yvette says, tried liver today. It tastes just as I remembered it from childhood. Still don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the hardest way to eat liver is to kind of fry it up in a pan and eat it like that. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta make this real easy. So I think pate is the easiest thing for me. Um, it is the the least objectionable way for me to eat it. Um, or Yvette, I would sec recommend maybe buying those carnivore crisps, um, the liver uh, kind. Those are not as bad. Um, you know, that can help. Try that. Um, yeah, Johnny G is right. Pate can really... Um, you know, that can really work very well. Uh, and Johnny G says, cheap meal, never a day. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's better just to do one thing and then get right back. Um, GMO says, I did this, uh, I did for this season. Um, I guess that means have a cheat day. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, but looking forward to everyone getting back on track. Um, let's see. Lorraine says, thanks for stepping out there and giving us all great info to help make our lives better. Awesome. Yes. I'm really happy to do it. I just want to see people following this way of eating and having success. So yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see. So Douglas says, even now, and then my cheating is adding green peppers and onions to my ground beef and sausage. Sure. You know, um, that, that can be okay. You know, and remember I have said like in the car black carnivore community that, um, you know, I, I think it's important to have some flexibility when you're thinking about, you know, doing the carnivore diet. So we have strict carnivore, moderate carnivore and relaxed carnivore strict being, you know, truly all from the animal kingdom. Uh, moderate incorporating, you know, coffee, herbs and spices and low sugar fruits like avocados and olives, and then relax, including artificial sweeteners. And, you know, if you're um, occasional vegetables, if you go out and there's a side and you eat that, you know, it's fine. So it's more like clean keto, really. Um, so anywhere in there is fine. And so if you have, you know, if you make stuff sometimes and you add peppers and onions, like, okay, you know, that's fine. You're still, you're still in the family. You're still in the fold. <laughs> and if you don't have any, you know, negative repercussion from it, you know, don't worry about it. I found that, you know, early on when I took out the vegetables, they, um, you know, I very, very quickly lost a taste for them. So even things that I used to think that I liked, like red peppers or tomatoes or, um, you know, carrots, like even things that I used to think I liked, I, after a short break and I came back to them, it was just like, oh, 
you know, what, why I don't like this texture. I don't like the taste. There's a bitterness to it. Like there's nothing good about it. So, um, so I don't know, you know, that something like that may happen to you. Like, I didn't feel like it was a struggle for me not to eat these things. It was just kind of like, I just lost my taste for them. So that may happen for you as well. Um, real, uh, last real one says, do cooking all that meat get in your clothes? Do your place smell like beef grease? Um, I don't know. It might, but I like the smell <laughs> and the taste. So I don't really complain about it. My brother who was staying here with me, um, he, he did complain about the smell and, uh, you know, it was just kind of like, I don't know. I mean, this is food. So, um, I, I don't know. Uh, it is messy though. And I, that is my only complaint. Um, I, you know, it's a lot of cleaning, a lot of cleaning. Um, let's see. Heather G says, um, yeah, they're all brainwashed. My aunt told me over the holidays that the diet would mess up my blood sugar levels. I told her I was just testing and it's 5.4. So no worries there. Yeah, you know, there's this new thing. Like, I think maybe this is a thing in the vegetarian or vegan community. They're starting to say that keto will um, give you diabetes, that it, it causes your blood sugar to be, um, uh, you know, to get messed up. And, I, you know, I was just kind of like, wow, I don't even understand where, um, you know, where this is coming from or how they justify you know, that statement or that message. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of research to show that a ketogenic diet reverses diabetes. It reverses um, high blood pressure and, you know, all of the signs of metabolic syndrome. So yeah, I mean, I'm glad you pushed back on your aunt and I hope that she, you know, took that to heart. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, Johnny G also likes oxtail broth. Yeah, that's good stuff. I do. I mean, if oxtails were less expensive, I would definitely be eating that all the time. And then I would be having, you know, more broth. Um, but, you know, I just can't do it. Uh, okay, Audra says, uh, okay, Audra is bringing us back to the original topic, which is sleeping. So thank you very much, Audra. I really do appreciate that. <laughs> I know a lot of people joined after... Um, you know, the beginning where I was really talking about a lot of the sleep stuff. Um, I started on time today. <laughs> okay. So Audra says cold room, heavy, warm blankets, light, uh, reduction towards evening, blackout curtains, not eating within two hours of bed, nightly magnesium glyc gly gly uh, glycinate, a uh, great recipe for sleep. Yeah. So all of that is good. Yeah, I didn't, I forgot about the magnesium. Some people really find, I mean, magnesium is, uh, you know, it causes muscles to relax. So a lot of people find that's really helpful before bed. Uh, so you could do that. And it also helps with um, restless leg syndrome, which, um, you know, a, a lot of people have or muscle cramps that can happen in the night. Um, so, uh, the magnesium can be a great thing to add if you're having difficulty. Um, or you can also do a warm bath in, uh, Epsom salts, which is magnesium and you're, you can absorb magnesium through the skin. So instead of, you know, uh, eating it or taking a pill, you can, uh, you can soak in it as well. So great suggestion. Thank you, Audra. Thank you for bringing us back. Um, okay. Douglas says, uh, I may have to try the beef liver pills, liver is something that I'm trying to eat. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like, um, you know, don't, you don't have to try that hard. Like if you don't like it, don't have it. You know, there's so much nutrition in what we're eating. Like it's not necessary until you feel like you want it. So, um, so yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, don't worry about it. So Audra says, I eat off plan on rare occasion until it no longer serves me. Sugar, wheat, garbage makes me physically ill, not motivated to eat off plan. Yes. That's what I like to hear. So happy about that. Nice. Oh, and Johnny G says, my tennis elbow hates fructose. Yeah. It, it you know, the sugar like increases the inflammation and, um, I'm sure that's what the tennis elbow is, you know, some kind of inflammation. So yes. Um, 
Okay, so Lorraine says um, ox liver uh, cut up, put cumin. Um, oh, okay, liver. Sorry, not ox. Liver fix. So this is how uh, Lorraine makes liver. So put cumin and smoked pap paprika on it overnight. Then dip in egg and pork rind panko and then cook in bacon grease. After a while of this, when you cook it um, in just bacon grease, it's great. So, yes, um, you can definitely try that, putting on a lot of herbs. I, I have um, dredged it through, you know, with egg and then pork rind panko and fried it. And it was, um, it was amazingly executed, but it was still liver. <laughs> so it didn't taste great to me, but... Um, but that is definitely a tasty way of doing it. And, you know, it tastes like, um, well, you know, fried anything, crunchy exterior. Um, and yeah, so, but yeah, thanks Lorraine. And so I hope some of you give that a try. Um, you know, using the pork rind panko to fry anything is really, you know, it is delicious. So that can, can work for you with the liver. Um, and uh, yeah, and so Douglas says everything wrong with the human diet involves plants. The more you process that, process that plant, the worse it gets. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Uh, mommy does keto. Oh no, Christmas was a bloat fest. What a difference. Um, so sorry to hear that. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things I love about not cheating anymore is not having like these physical um, you know, wild swings with my body, you know, in terms of weight and how much water I'm holding and in terms of how I feel and my brain, you know, my brain function and mood and all of that. Like I'd have these wild swings, you know, when I would go off and eat these other things and I would go from feeling fantastic to feeling horrible in such a short period of time. And I just got so tired of that too. So, uh, yeah, it was really nice to stop doing that. Um, okay. So, uh, Leonard says, Dr. Barry says he sometimes cheats on carnivore with keto. Yeah. I think that's really the best option, you know, like stay in ketosis. Um, you know, cause that's a real, that's a real big difference when you come out of ketosis and like, you know, you just, um, like you just drop like your, you know, everything, um, goes uh, you know, goes haywire when you, um, switch, you know, from burning fat to burning sugar. Um, yeah. And Audra says, unfortunately my extended family eats tilapia, chicken breast, back salad, plastic bottle water, bread, rice. Yuck. They're concerned about my red meat, salt and fat intake. Uh, although I'm healthier. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I definitely, you know, my eye, I look at those bagged salads and it's like, really, you know, what, what's in here that is of benefit? You know, we're looking at lettuce that was picked, you know, maybe a month ago has traveled all over, you know, the, the country or the world. It's, you know, it's not came from, you know, soil that was not very rich in the first place. And yeah, and it's just filler. Um you know, it's not nutrient dense. It's just filler. So, uh, yeah, not, not for me. So you're doing the right thing, Audra. I'm here. I support you. You know, we're on the right track. Um, our message is getting out there. We'll get out there. Uh, okay. Meat based musing says I take, um, theanine at night sometimes to help with sleep. Oh, what is that? I don't know anything about that one. If you give us a little bit more, um, uh, intro, um, info about it. Yeah. Cause I've never heard of that one before. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, we have had a nice discussion about sleep and, uh, you know, I think I might want to wrap this up, but I do encourage you to try some of these things, try some of the sleep things that I had talked about, um, earlier and, uh, in particular do the mouth taping. And let me know how, you know, how that turned out for you. Comment in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram and let me know how the mouth taping turned out for you. Cause it really, uh, I was surprised. I did not think that I was going to, uh, you know, notice much difference or that it was going to mean anything for me. So, 
um, yeah, it was good. So, uh, all right, everybody. So this is the last time I'm going to see you in 2021. I will see you all next year. Oh my God. I cannot believe the year is over. I cannot believe it's been almost two years since all this nonsense began with, uh, you know, the pandemic and everything. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's been, I, I can't believe this has gone on this long and it feels like it's never going to end. Um, but, um, you know, but it's been nice to spend this time with you. Uh, if I may take a moment to just uh, say thank you to all of you for being here, for supporting um, this channel and, um, you know, for, for helping me to grow. And I, you know, I pledge to do what I can to stand by and to provide, you know, continue to provide, um, you know, meaningful content that helps you to, uh, you know, continue on with your carnivore lifestyle and helps you to perhaps, you know, get family involved as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I will try to bring on and continue to bring on interesting people. And, and I really, what I really like to do is to highlight you guys. So if you feel like, you know, you have started to, um, see improvement, you're pleased with how your carnivore, um, journey is going, I encourage you to reach out to me and let me know that you're ready to come on the podcast and tell your story. Because that is what I think is most compelling and uh, convincing to the people who are thinking about doing this. You know, it's not all the scientific studies. It's about whether people are seeing success and their lives are changing for the better. So if that, if things are starting to work out with you, please come tell your story. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, Heather says, uh, she takes CBD oil to help with sleep. Yep. That can, um, that works. Audra says the theanine relaxes your mind. I use it when I cannot turn off the brain. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll have to look that up. Um, all right. Mommy does keto. Happy new year. Heather, happy new year. Happy new year, everyone. Uh, I, you know, I am so glad that, uh, you know, that you're all here and, uh, yeah, have a happy new year and I will see you all in 2022. All right. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Bye.